Hello and welcome to the Regio Grapevine's newscast. My name is Valo Grattison. I'm the editor in chief at the Regio Grapevine. This lazy dog here is my chief of morale officer. She's been working hard though, past days and weeks. We just came out of printing. Uh, among things, of course, we have to print our magazine every month. That's like uh, the core of what we do. Uh, we also did something like this. This is the best of Reykjavik. And I love this. This is what we do like on site of everything else. And what we do in these magazines, which are very, very nice, by the way, uh, we try to tell people that are traveling to Iceland and, and Icelanders as well. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a construction going on here. What are, what, are, what are they doing, by the way? Probably something about the... Uh, yeah, with the rocky garden here. Anyways, this year, uh, we do basically the best of everything. Best of, uh, like, a restaurant, best of drinking, pro tips, try the drinks. <laughs> uh, yeah, we also, we have a bad sense of humor, I guess. Uh, this will go with every discount box that you order uh, from today until Monday uh, next week. This week, I'm never sure, like, if I say next Wednesday or something like that, then the Brits will basically come here a week later, week, week too late. But this is what we're doing, and please check us out. And, uh, yeah, let's go get into it. I'm going to start a little bit about nepotism in Iceland. <laughs> Not the easiest uh, way to start a conversation, but we need to have it. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Uh, we covered this quite excessively, actually, in our uh, podcast. So if you want to hear more, where me and uh, Josie and Kate speak about this, I have a conversation about this, you can, of course, check out our podcast that just uh, came out today also. Uh, but... Uh, this is the scandal that it, it can't be avoided because everybody's talking about it. Icelanders are quite upset about this. And the thing is, there is a, we have a, like a Minister of Culture and Education. This is a woman. Her name is Lilja Alfredsdóttir. Uh, and this woman, uh, she is uh, fairly new in politics and she is a member of the, of the parliament uh, for, the, for the Progressive Party. In Icelandic, that would be Framsóknarflokkurinn. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's a mouthful, but it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a party that has been here for decades, one of the oldest parties that we have in Iceland. What do you say, Polly? Ah, yes, we found it. And the thing is, you want to go down here, Art? And the thing is that... Uh, there is like a controversial thing that she did. We have a national museum in, in Iceland and it's one of our like most pre pre prestigious museums you can find, like cultural institutes that you can find in Iceland uh, for various reasons. I mean, Icelanders have a culture dated back, eight, back to 800 uh, and 74, basically. Uh, we have a lot of good writers. We have a lot of uh, nice uh, archaeologists uh, and archaeology stuff to display. And, uh, and for, for example, the director of this museum, decades ago, though, uh, was Christian Eldjörn, one of our most uh, respected presidents of our democracy. So, National Museum, a pretty important institute for Icelanders. But what Lilia did, actually, is that um, the former director of the National Museum uh, just uh, resigned, basically because she was just no, no bad thing about that. She was just like need to do something else, or, 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 or like getting like stop working, basically. Uh, and uh, and Lilia actually, instead of like advertising the job, uh, she just uh, used this clause in, in laws that she can actually take one person, like a like a government. Uh, government employee uh, and move him to another post. And here's the thing, the Union of Archaeologists, there is a thing called Union of Archaeologists in Iceland actually, uh, they were not very happy about this, and rightly so. So, <laughs> so what happened is that they criticized this heavily, 
And not only that, but Lilia, as well as the Progressive Party, they have been doing this quite a lot, actually, to move people between posts within the gov government without advertising the post at all. So, here's the thing. It's legal. That's the funny thing. Um, it's legal because it's, it's meant to be an exemption. It means that, for example, if you're, if you're hired to be in the, uh, in the ministry of... Um, or the Prime Minister's cabin, and perhaps there is no room for you there anymore, it's, uh, they can, like, put you into another ministry without uh, going through the process of advertising and everything. And there are fairly strict laws about this. But the thing is, of course, uh, this can obviously be misused, as we can see here. I mean, I mean, there is a pretty good logic that this is not the correct way to do things, especially... Well, okay, this is still open. Uh, and the thing is that the, <coughs> uh, she didn't, the, the, like the defense of the minister says that this woman is qualified. And nobody has like, said anything else than, yeah, perhaps she is. But we don't know if there could have been a more qualified person to do this. And perhaps there was an opportunity to have a discussion about the National Museum, which is very important to keep alive and fresh uh, because, well, it's not the freshest uh, museum in town. So uh, it might have been a good opportunity. She didn't want to do this. And the thing is, of course, this is not the first time. Um, she broke the, the equality laws when she actually uh, she, she hired a man instead of the woman, that both of them were equally qualified. Uh, and therefore, yeah, are we going to get stuck here, Arthur? We just might. Well, then we have to wait for four hours. It's no problem. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, they, this is now in the hands of the, the parliament. Uh, and they want to revise these rules, but it doesn't seem like uh, that Lilia is backing off at, in, in any way. So this woman that was hired, I mean, she used to be the director of the National Gallery in Iceland, which is a pretty good gallery, actually, and, and I mean, no problem with that in, in, its, in itself, uh, but it doesn't seem like that the post will be uh, advertised. And keep in mind, Nobody has advertised this job uh, since 2002, in 20 years. So it's like, uh, does it feel good? Because this is very much of like the, the old school politics in Iceland. And the old school politics in Iceland is this nepotism. And we go over this, all of this uh, in our uh, uh, podcast. What do you say, Art? Do you think we can do this? Well, I can do it. Can you? Now, <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. The most complicated news that I've ever gone through. So, I'm going to go through two murder cases. Uh, it's that year uh, of the decade. We have two murders this year. Uh, one that was in uh, Blunduos, and I told you about not that long ago. Uh, a very disturbed man broke into this family's home shot the uh, woman in her 50s uh, and gravely injured uh, her husband uh, until her son, the son of the couple uh, woke up, of course, because of the, the, he used a gun to kill them, uh, kill the woman. Uh, <coughs> then he woke up and he, he killed the, the attacker. Now, uh, this is, of course... Still I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not the moment for laughing though. Sorry about that. Uh, so the thing is, uh, there is a it's a fairly controversial case for a few like obvious reason. First of all, uh, the son that killed the attacker uh, has the, the like the position of a suspect in this case. Uh, it's clear that he, uh, well, it hasn't been like, uh, uh, like we don't know exactly about the details in the case, but uh, it's pretty clear that he uh, stopped the gunman, which is, I have to say, uh, a positive thing in my mind. The other thing is 
that the, the man that was shot at in the stomach, and he is now actually away, awake, uh, he's not going to die, but he, he, his injuries are very serious. Uh, he actually, he also has the status of a suspect. Now, why is that, would you ask? That's a good question. The police uh, have answered the, the Icelandic media, and they say the, the reason for this is because he has stronger, like, stand uh, legally when it comes to the case. This means that when he's asked questions and so on, he can, for example, refuse to answer, or uh, he can also have a lawyer uh, present uh, when he's answering. In my opinion, I mean, it feels like these laws needs to be changed here. I mean, this is really odd and perhaps a very, like, a heavy thing to burden people with after going through such a horrible ordeal like this was. Now, we have another murder in Iceland. Is this it, Arthur? I think the ocean is going over. I think we will get stuck there if we go all the way. I know you would love, actually, and we would have to hook uh, we have to get a right with these boats here. Well, okay. I think I can do it. And Polly, over him, over him. Nee, ja, pust hem weg. Okay. You think you can do that? <laughs> now I want to see Art do it. I know he's gonna cut while he's doing it. Well done. <laughs> okay. I should have recorded that myself. Onwards. Now, the second murder is also quite uh, uh, odd in some ways. Uh, now, there is a young man in his 20s. He's in custody after he beat another man to death in Bardavogur, which is in Reykjavik. Uh, this, this is uh, like... He had, like, a, he, he seems to have been, this man, this young man, seems to have been not all there, a little bit, uh, let's just say that uh, he needed to go to psychiatric evaluation, and they said simply that he, he's fit for trial. It doesn't say anything else. There might be a lot of stuff wrong with him, and my guess is it's the case, but he is now on trial, actually, for, uh, for murdering this man in, in his uh, uh, late 40s. And that man uh, was beaten to death in a horrific scenario. Uh, this young man actually says that himself that this was in self-defense. Now, self-defense in Iceland is a very complicated thing. This is not like in the US or something like that. The, uh, like, the questions are basically... Did you have, like, if there is a minor, like, uh, suspect that you might actually uh, been able to uh, get away from the situation, uh, that would probably, like, then that defense won't even work. So it's, it's a little bit more complicated, I think, than in many countries. So we have two tr murder trials going on, like two murder cases, one murder trial. Uh, how do we do this? Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, and then to the fourth news. Don't worry, I will end this actually with a fantastic news uh, about uh, swimming with whales. So don't 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 uh, go anywhere uh, anywhere. Uh, right now, like last Saturday, we had a record uh, report about spiking drinks in Reykjavik. Now, I know this has been uh, a lot of discussion about this in the UK, actually. Uh, this has also been a recurring uh, discussion in Iceland that drinks of young women have been spiked. Uh, not only young women, they're actually most often women, but, uh, but many of them like seem very drunk, but they aren't. They actually have perhaps had one glass of wine or something, and then, uh, like, they feel like there is something off, and possibly they have been spiked. 
Now, we had four reports of this the same night, last Saturday, and the police actually sent out a statement about this. They were a little bit concerned about this. They drew up blood from all of these women uh, and sent to uh, analyze them. And hopefully we'll see something from about it, because it's interesting in Iceland that, and especially with these uh, cases, when drinks are spiked, and they do, they keep in mind, be like, Whoever is doing this does this for various reasons. Uh, most often is to sexually abuse the, the victims. Uh, it's also, for example, uh, done to like raw people. There are various ways to do this, actually. But in Iceland, it seems to be the same thing. These are often like younger women. And this is quite a concern. These cases are unusually high this year. Uh, we have had around 34 reports, um, no, 32 uh, reports, uh, but in, in 2007, there were 37. So, the, like, th 2007 was the highest year that we had, but we are now, like, what, uh, nine months into the, into the year, and we are in 32, which is, we might actually get higher. So it, it's, it's, it's quite something. Uh, the good news is that the police is actually taking this quite serious now. That's the best news. Uh, this means that uh, the police is... Because it hasn't always been the case. And you probably know this from your own home country. They often say, like, <laughs> like that they misunderstand, like, think they, they are way too drunk and so on, and therefore dismiss this completely. It's very easy, actually, to do that. Uh, and also, in Iceland, for example, this is almost a myth today, because... Well, there hasn't one of these cases hasn't been like uh, uh, what do you call it like uh, proved. Uh, none of these cases have been into court. Uh, these are only reports like like hor horrific stories from the nightlife in Reykjavik. Uh, so, I mean, hopefully they will find something. This, I mean, also like why are these only stories? It's because uh, obviously because they are not like investigating it like this should be the police. But this seems to be changing right now. Now, uh, <clears throat> why are we here, though, in this beautiful, beautiful place? It's actually much easier to get here, uh, like uh, in other times, which is a little bit late, so it means that the, the ocean is a little bit higher. But this is, of course, Grotta. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit, uh, perhaps, more about it later. But uh, we're here because we're surrounded with Faxa flowing. Uh, that's the area here. This is the, the Bay of Faxa Flowey. And this is where a lot of whales live, actually. Uh, and if you come to Reykjavik, for example, and you want to see whales, you will sail out here and you will see... Uh, you, they will show you, find some whales for you, and there are like hundreds uh, of them all around. Now, uh, because weather has been incredibly good past uh, days, at least, uh, meaning that uh, there is no wind, it's quite nice in, in general. Uh, and what's interesting is that uh, we have seen a lot of whales in unusual places and they have been very peaceful. For example, we saw uh, in the, the bay of uh, Akureyri, in the northeast uh, of Iceland, there was uh, like a lot of whales there just swimming for everyone in the town to see, well, like a beautiful sight. But also in Arnarfjörður, as in the Westfjörds, there, was, uh, there, there were a few whales there. They were... How do you say it in English? I think you say humpback whales, yeah. They were swimming in the fjord of Arnarfjörður. And this is in the Westfjörds. Uh, and Thomas Guðbjörsson, he's actually a heart surgeon. Uh, he's quite the character. He is like an incredibly skilled surgeon and also incredibly skilled... Uh, hiker and outdoorsman. Uh, he, he loves that. He's been writing articles for Fréttablæði, the biggest newspaper in Iceland, where he's been like uh, telling people, uh, like writing about his, his experience where, where he's going hiking and so on. Like stuff that Iceland is sweet, uh, stuff about the nature in Iceland that uh, only... Uh, yeah, and he does this very well. Uh, and he's often with a photographer also. And he actually... Uh, I got these videos from him. And they are insane. Uh, in this fjord, uh, he was swimming there. He sat, he went into the ocean four times and he was swimming with the whales uh, for a few minutes every, every time. I mean, it's not that easy to be in the Icelandic Ocean. It's quite cold. 
Uh, and also while around the humpback whales, I guess it's, it's a stressful situation. But he said it was absolutely wonderful. Uh, and they were there, uh, and, the, and Gisli Ayir Aukusson, Ayir, by the way, means ocean, <laughs> Gisli the ocean. Uh, he actually took these videos that he gave to us, and, and you can see them uh, here, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful to see these guys uh, like swimming with the whales. This is something we don't see often in Iceland. The whales are, of course, always in great depths. As you can see here, this is a huge bay. But if you can, if I can show you this, we can even see the boats here. Check it out, we can see the boats over there. And these are the whale watching boats that are actually looking for the whales. So they are not that far off from us here in Reykjavik. That's it for the Reykjavik newscast. Uh, and uh, uh, remember, of course, uh, if you buy a discount box, and if you come into Iceland, for example, uh, you can, will get this with every box. And this is brilliant, because if you have no idea where to go, don't worry, we have figured that out for you. You only need this and you can find all the places that are uh, brilliant in, in Reykjavik or, or in Iceland. Uh, this is best of Reykjavik, so it's only in Reykjavik, but we also do best of Iceland. But let's keep on with this for now. Uh, until next time, of course, we will be here on Thursday. Uh, goodbye and thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you, if you like stuff like this. Uh, comment also, uh, it really helps our algorithm and so on. You know how this works. Uh, yeah, and until then, just enjoy the incredible view here. It's it's absolutely wonderful day. Yeah.